G'day guys, Ian here, and today we are talking about bringing your baby snake home. Now guys, if you are new to this channel and you haven't already done so, please do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel, turn on those post notifications, and welcome to Cookies Critters. Okay guys, so the most important thing that you can do when you do bring your little baby snake home is make sure that you have the ideal setup ready to go for it. Now, obviously these little babies have been growing out in a, uh, in a tub rack similar to this, and these tubs behind us are five liters. Now, obviously when a baby comes home to your place, you're gonna need to set up something very similar to what we have behind us, obviously not to the same scale. And to do so, Simply all you need to do is go to your local hardware or supermarket and pick up one of these kind of uh, Tupperware containers with the uh, clip lock lid. So that way uh, this little guy does not escape. Now obviously the, uh, the tub is sealed and we do need to ventilate it like we've done up here and we've gone through and we put a series of holes in the lid. And you can even go one step further and ventilate around the front of the container. Now, considerations when you do ventilate your container is we always use a soldering iron and a soldering iron will just melt through the plastic as opposed to using a drill, which potentially will crack the plastic, but it also gives a nice soft and smooth finish. Now, what you've got to remember is a little baby snake can be quite small. Now, when we do have baby snakes, Bear in mind the size of the holes that you do put into your lid and into your enclosure, into your tub. We don't want our snakes escaping through the holes that we've given for ventilation. So hole sizing is super critical when it comes to baby snakes. Now, obviously snakes can be escape artists. They can be a bit of a Houdini. So having things like your containers with your little clip lock lids here, so that way it locks on nice and tight and that way your snake is not gonna just be able to push the lid off. And he just gave me a little choo-choo. Okay, <laughs> and here he goes again. Um, but anyway, so this is our tub set up that we need. Simply a seven liter tub would be perfectly adequate for a little guy like this. Now, obviously if you went ahead and you put your little baby snake straight away into a three foot or a four foot enclosure, the risk is that this little guy is gonna to stray too far away from the heat, from the, from the basking spot, and potentially get lost in that size enclosure. Now, obviously a snake is gonna find its way back, but the time that it's away from the heat, it's gonna stop metabolizing, therefore its appetite will decrease and potentially impact its feeding routine. Now, the absolute worst case scenario, as you can see, this guy is absolutely tiny. Now, if you have an enclosure and it has, say, uh, three or four mil gaps in the, in the glass, or if you've got a mesh lid, then these guys can find the smallest little holes and push their way through it. So uh, glass enclosures, even melamine enclosures with sliding doors can be problematic with young baby snakes. So the, uh, the tub that we will be setting up today is perfectly appropriate for a hatchling snake for the first 12 months of their life. Now, after that point, we do move our snakes, our yearlings into our Bell's 41 rack. And from there, obviously, as they progress and become adult, around that sort of two and a half-ish mark, we do move them into our Bell 80 racks. So guys, let's get stuck into setting up this little hatchling enclosure. Hey guys, so here we do have our seven liter Systema tub. We do already have the ventilation holes across the cool end. And now all we need to do is choose our substrate. Now, as a reptile breeder and a keeper, I do prefer using paper towel. Obviously, these little guys have been raised on paper towel. It's clean, it's easy, it's hygienic. Um, obviously, once they defecate, open their bowels and urate, then you simply just chuck out the paper and you put fresh paper towel in. It's really, really easy and clean. From a, uh, a medical point of view, paper towel is awesome for a quarantine purpose. Obviously, uh, you're bringing home a baby snake and potentially you may have other snakes in your collection already. Now, depending on the breeder, if they haven't done a good job keeping their collection clean, 
potentially you might find little black spots all over your paper towel and that would be indication of your um, your baby snake having mites now other things from a medical standpoint obviously on paper towel it's very easy to see changes in their stool so when they go to the toilet they do a poo they uh, push out a urate obviously if there's inconsistencies and, and irregularities in their stool you'll pick it up a lot easier if it's on paper towel than being absorbed in a uh, absorbent kitty litter or a mulch type substrate the uh, the final reason why i like paper towel over your loose mulch substrates obviously snakes do eat whole prey items if uh if you're housing your little baby snake on something like chipsy um, potentially when the snake strikes at the rodent and pulls the uh, the rodent in and starts chewing and swallowing on it then potentially you're going to be uh, picking up some of that loose substrate on the rodent and uh, potentially can cause some mouth and gum irritations and infections so paper towel uh, is always my go-to uh, especially for the first 12 months after that point uh, go your hardest make your own informed decision and uh, switch over to a nice naturalistic enclosure by all means but uh, for ease of caring and keeping we always recommend paper towel so the three most important things that you will need is heat protection in form of a hide and a water bowl now simply with our heat mat what we want to do is we want to heat one third of the tub only so simply all we need to do is we slide our heat mat under the rear section of the tub and this way as we can see if i pull the heat mat out a little bit it only takes up around about a third to maybe just under a half of the actual tub itself so we've got our heat mat so now this little dude actually has some heat to digest his food your first hide yeah awesome your first hide on the hot side so that way when this little guy has had a feed he can easily uh, digest his food in the safety of a hide on the hot spot if you have the luxury and you've got the space by all means put a hide on the cool side over here that way when he's uh, finished digesting then he can always move over to the cool side as well and this little dude is a little bit grumpy the third and final thing that you will need is water in their bowl now obviously snakes need water for hydration but they also need higher water to assist with their shedding and uh, increasing the humidity inside their little environment now a, uh, a really good tip is make sure that you always have your water bowl on the cool side obviously if you put your water on the hot side then what's going to happen is the humidity is going to increase phenomenally obviously you are heating up the water the water is going to evaporate a lot faster so we can simply put our little dude inside his tub put the lid on and lock and we are ready to go now whenever it comes to giving any kind of heat source to any reptile we always recommend a thermostat to regulate the uh, the heat that we are giving now obviously this is a very basic setup then we can just use a very basic uh, thermostat to do this we don't need things with programs and day night cycles these guys just need a constant temperature to keep warm he will be able to thermoregulate and move from the hot hide to the cool hide and obviously even cool down in the water if he so chooses but it is important that we do have a thermostat to regulate the uh, the temperature inside this tub so what we do is we plug our heat mat into the thermostat thermostat gets plugged into the wall and with the probe obviously the probe does detect the uh, the temperature inside the tub we want to make sure that that is on the heated side so we can place that probe in the heated side
and it's all locked in, secured, ready to go. We have heat, we have hides, we have water, we have ventilation, and we have a thermostat. Now, in terms of the, uh, the temperature regulations for your snakes, that is a species specific kind of thing uh, with the ballpark ranging between 32 and 35 degrees. Um, but guys, that is it. We have uh, set up a temporary home for the next 12 months for this little baby snake until he can upgrade to a full size enclosure. Okay guys, so that is it. That is how you set up a, uh, a snake hatchling tub for when you bring your little babies home. Now guys, uh, if you did enjoy the video, if you do have any questions, please feel free. Drop them down in the comments section below. If you haven't already done so, please give that like button a good old book. Subscribe to the channel, turn on those post notifications. And as always guys, if you've got them, keep your beard treated and your snakes heated. <laughs>